Well, hello there, YouTube, and uh, today I'm going to show you the deck I'm thinking of maining for uh, local, which will be starting for me in a couple of weeks. And basically, most of you now have seen my Crystal Beast video. If you haven't, it's earlier in the channel list. You can look through our previous uploaded videos. It's there. Um, this is a tech version more towards abundance OTK and I just want to share it, get views on it, you know, as you do. Um sorry the intro's not up yet, uh we're still waiting for it and I decided to do this at a bit of a rush so I'm still waiting for the intro. But yeah, when it's done you guys are really gonna like it. So on with the deck. Uh first here Again, three Sapphire Pegasus. So I'm just going to move my mat a little bit. It's bugging me. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I've got three Sapphire Pegasus. Yeah. You know why? Because it's got that great effect. Three Topaz Tiger. Again, favorite Crystal Beast monster, and it's a 2,000 beta when it attacks a monster. Three Amber Mammoth. This is. I've added an extra one because I want to be able to defend my Topaz. Quite a lot of people will go for whatever they can get, which is usually a 1700 beta to try and take out the Topaz quickly. If you've got Amber Mouth on the field as well, you can direct the attack and suicide the Amber. Amber's not affected, Amber just goes to the ST zone, fuels your Abundance and your other cards, and their monster gets destroyed and put in the graveyard. Um, I've still got a pair of Ruby Carbuncle in here because, yeah, she special summons pretty easily and she just lets you spam them with Beacon and stuff like that, it's pretty easy. Um, I've got a pair of Mist Valley Falcon in here now. Um, this is because you can recycle some of your cards like. Sapphire Pegasus you can recycle and uh, if you use the field spell for its draw effect and you know your opponent's not going to have anything like Mirror Force or whatever down, you can bounce the field spell, replay it, draw again every turn. That can get on your opponent's nerves quite well. Uh, you can bounce uh, any like quite a few of the other cards in here, like some of the traps if you haven't got a monster to bounce, like Sapphire Peg. Because that's what it's mainly for is bouncing Sapphire Peg to re get its effect every turn. But say you haven't got it, you could bounce because all the traps I use in here are pretty easy to set off. You could just bounce one, reset it, and it wouldn't really matter. Uh, and another card it can bounce which I've added in is I've added in a pair of Battle Fader. Haven't seen this done in any other Crystal Beast deck. But I'm putting in because quite a lot of the time, uh, once your opponent sees what you're doing with Falcon to recycle Pegasus or the field spell, they will try and match it at a 2000 beat, even if it's something like the gains attack for whatever, like Topaz Tiger that gains 400 attack. They will try and uh, just suicide the Falcon because they know Falcon's not going to go to the ST zone, and they know Falcon is. Well, obviously, they don't know why he's there. So, the two battlefields are there for that. They're also there, but I haven't got Amber Mammoth to defend Topaz or whatever. And to be fair, once they go to Graveyard, it doesn't really matter. And again, Falcon can bounce Fade as well. So, you could drop a Fader for Falcon, end the battle phase, next turn, attack Falcon, bounce Fader. Because that way, you could easily defend most of your monsters and whatever. Um, and also you'll be able to keep doing it every turn, so it's like a continuous sword of even light. And your opponent's just going to give up eventually. Uh, spell cards now. Three rainbow runes. As I was saying, you can bounce through a falcon as well to keep getting redraws off it. That, that's quite a nice way to recycle it. And obviously, for Crystal Beast, it's probably the best spell card out there. Uh, since it's Abundance OKK, I've added an extra Abundance and gone to three. Um, yeah, you can see why. It's also, uh, yeah, I'm waiting for a pair of Summoner Monk uh, to come, which I'm going to tech in later. I haven't put them in here yet, I haven't proxied them because I'm just going to wait for them. It can survive without them. Um, 
if you draw two abundance at the beginning you can ditch an abundance for monk monk is an easy pegasus it's an easy falcon then you can get your loop going it's an easy topaz if you need it or an easy whatever so yeah but you I'll, I'll explain that when I update again uh... three crystal beacon again great for pegasus great for carbuncle because you need two on the back row to activate so carbuncle can get two out because this deck can OTK without abundance is just a little bit harder but it can do it um, I've got a pair of crystal blessing here uh, obviously because that can fuel abundance it can fuel beacon whatever if you go if you get four on the back row go for beacon get carbuncle you can uh, actually win without abundance providing they haven't got any back row or any monsters it's happened to me before so it does work pair of promise again for carbuncle for pegasus I might put three in but I'm not really sure what I want to take out yet the only two cards I've got that I really want to take out are there for when Monk arrives. Pair of Release, again obvious, uh, put one on the back row when it's destroyed, boost by 800. Can't really affect Falcon or Fader but it'll do. Pair of Tree, I could possibly take those out but I kind of like them if you get it early game and you start getting loads of destruction going on you can quickly pilot your back row and go for abundance if you need to uh, I've got a pair of swords as well because yeah they just defend your monsters and another good combo if you if you lose all your saffs or whatever you can I mean even stuff I get sent to the back row you can miss value it that's a good point as well to make but like you can swords and then bounce swords with um, Falcon's effect and keep bouncing it every turn and then replaying it as long as you've got the card space. If you're waiting for abundance that's a good way to do it and then as soon as you draw abundance uh, you can just let your opponent MST it or something. I don't know because you won't be able to abundance it. But what you could do is you could uh, like attack, bounce the swords, let them attack because next turn you're going to abundance. Um, traps now. I've added three extra traps in but two of them are what I'm probably going to take out from Monk um, and that's these two last resort for now they're just an extra way to get uh, Rainbow Ruins which is one of the most important cards in the deck and I'll probably take them out from Monk later because Rainbow Ruins isn't essential it's just nice uh, also, but yeah you can see why it's a nice way to uh, play it I've got a Magical Hat uh, with crystal release if you haven't drawn them this is especially effective because you can flip it set your monster set to and uh, remember this can work on any monster in deck as well so you could do it with a fader if you've got one left over um, then if they don't even manage to destroy the releases when they end the battle phase I believe yeah end of the battle phase the crystal releases will go to graveyard because crystal release only has to be sent to the graveyard to activate you get your two monsters from it which is a nice way, it's just nice that it works like that and then I've got a mirror force for defense a torrential because it doesn't affect my monsters I can like wreck a setup like they're going for like two sync, two monsters and they're going to go for Stardust or whatever torrential wreck the setup my monsters aren't affected they just go to the back row and it just fuels my uh, cards that rely on back row and last card again treacherous trap hole uh, I did explain this before it's just nice and it's so easy to set up you can just set it off when they draw or when they summon summon oh I'm just going to blow up both your monsters you can't sink for but it's quite about junk warriors when uh, people are trying to junk warrior but yeah I'm I'm thinking of putting MSTs and stuff in here I'm probably going to side them for now like a pair of MST uh, a dark hole act because dark hole doesn't hurt the deck either MST just adds to the deck uh, my side deck I haven't really finished it but it probably will comprise of stuff like MSTs and easy to set off spells and traps that will be effective in most game situations and then I can side out the swords or the trees or the resorts but, but there will be monks so they won't be coming out at any time uh, you may have realised I took away the rainbow dragon win condition I was planning to stick with rainbow dragon for good because it's an extra win condition but then 
thinking about putting the faders in and the falcons and I needed extra spell and trap support so I thought yeah you know what I'm just gonna take rainbow dragon out along with the other crystal beasts that aren't in here because I've only got four of the crystal beasts now so we've got cat eagle and tortoise missing so but yeah like I already explained that was for Fader, Falcon, and two, uh, well, I managed to get five extra ST though, because I just took Dragon Queen out. But, yeah. Not quite finished yet, but I think it'll do well. I uh, need the two, uh, summon the monks in place of Last Resort, but Last Resort will do for now. Because then you, you bother, Last Resort's just nice. Um, yeah. Thank you, YouTube.